Howdy, everyone. My name's Stevic McKay. I'm from Australian band 12 Foot Ninja. And I'm here today to talk about this guitar, the Shuriken Variax, and what you can do when you plug it into a Helix. So, um, just before I kick off, how many people uh, know what a Variax actually is? Yep. How many people would put their hand up if I said, put your hand up if you know something? <laughs> um, so that's what I see when I'm looking at the guitar. I've got your standard uh, contenders here, volume knob, tone knob, there's a five-way switch. The two different things here are these extra knobs here. We've got 12 model banks and a five-way pickup selector. So there's actually 60 guitar models inside this guitar, yes. That's right. And then you've got 12 alternate tunings. Now, if you just plug into a regular amp, you can access all of this manually. So you don't need a Helix or a Line 6 device to do all of the switching. I can change guitars, tunings, just by changing it. But if you do plug into a Helix or a Line 6 equipped uh, device, you can actually set the guitar changes in the pedal, which is how I use it, because it means I don't have to touch the guitar. So it was probably last year that we uh, first launched the Shuriken design um, at NAMM. And it was a bit of a, an experiment to see what would happen. And uh, it really took off. People have embraced it, which I'm super stoked about. Um, and here we are with a bunch of different finishes and stuff. I thought I'd bring the original design that I did in 2014. I just drew it on a Surface Pro and the... This carve out here is actually my thumb. I had it on there, I'm like, something, I need something. He went, took out the back. So that's why that's there. That's uh, kind of cool. Um, anyway, so uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna plow through um, a few 12 Foot Ninja songs and show you how I use the alternate tunings, um, how I use the different models. And I hope that in your head, you can think how you might use this stuff to create the music that you create. So. Uh, but before I do that, I want to just show you a quick video. I played a gig the other week in Melbourne and I had the audience say hello to you guys, specifically you guys. So that's like a thousand sweaty Australians saying hello to you. You can say hi back, they can't hear you though because that's a video. Um, so what is Variax technology? This is a question that gets asked uh, a lot. And the truth is I couldn't tell you exactly what it is. So I'm going to cross that out and focus on something else and show you something really quick that I'm not going to do because I think it's hilarious. Trey from Gear Gods uh, made a quick video of what guitar reviewers say. So this is what you're going to hear a lot of at NAMM. The tone is just massive. These pickups just sound massive. This amp sounds massive. massive. Really cleans up nicely when you roll back the volume. Got tons of clarity, really smooth highs, fat bass. Really got a lot of low end thump. You can turn it up a little bit for a nice pushed clean tone. It's got a lot of natural compression, really cutting mid range. It's very articulate, it's very violin like. It's kind of honky, but in a good way. It kind of sounds like hot garbage, but in a good way. It's a total game changer. You get the idea. <laughs> so I'm gonna focus on why I use Variax. Um, and as I said, the whole point of the, this guitar, it's not, I don't think of it as a signature guitar, otherwise it would be called the Stevic, and my ego would love it. The idea is it's more a, a tool that everyone can embrace, and I really want people to sort of get on this thing and make whatever music they're into. So I do sort of this genre jumping stuff in 12 Foot Ninja, but if that's not your cup of tea, you can play whatever you want. So. The diagrams that I'm gonna be showing a lot of look like this. This is a screen cap from Workbench, which is free software that comes with the Variax equipped guitars. So what I wanna draw your attention to are the main sort of features here. You've got the uh, body, so you can see the different types, the different models that I'm accessing. The pickup configuration, so you can change the pickups. I tend to rotate, you can rotate pickups to sort of get them to emphasize different aspects of the guitar. With my heavy sound, you might notice I tilt the humbucker towards the bridge to get more bite when that kicks in. The other thing that I want you to notice is the string volume. Now, if the string volume is on zero, that string is off. So I turn strings off a lot of the time. I find that quite useful. And then the string tuning. So I change uh, the tuning of the string, the volume, and the model and the pickup configuration. I do it multiple times in 
songs. So, for example, the, the track I'm going to play, this is the first sound. It's just a, a strat with a neck pickup, and I'm actually in... I've tuned the guitar physically to drop D. Otherwise, it's just standard. Um, on Workbench, it works off semitones. So you'll see that it says uh, E there, but because I've physically tuned the string to D, it's actually D. I just did that to be confusing. <laughs> um, next, we go to, from there, a more of a seven string standard kind of seven string sort of tuning, obviously on a six string. So that B is uh, actually negative five semitones. So if we're in D, that brings us to A. And then um, from there, I go to an acoustic guitar. Now in this section, I, I'm playing all basically on the D, G, B and E strings. So I turn the E and A off just in case in a live performance, I nick them and you get you know, this overtone note that you don't want. Pretty useful to get things out of the way. All right, now I'm going to attempt to play this song. In the, in the backing track, I have the video going through the changes, so you can kind of follow what's happening. Every time I'm touching the helix here, I'm doing these changes. So... Demo, thank you. Now, what we were just chatting about this before. What's cool about uh, that kind of music is you can just get one finger and just go. It sounds sick. As long as you do something with harmony later and then it redeems you. All right, so uh, here I want to go through another song. Now, I've actually contacted Guinness Book of World Records here because I changed tuning 18 times in this song. I reckon that's got to be a world record. And I want the coffee mug, you know? I think that'd be cool. So um, what I'm going to quickly whip through and show you the different guitars and tunings. So I've got a, a Telecaster there. Now I turn the first three strings off. As you can see, zero, zero, zero. Now why I do that is because it's a skank kind of vibe. Uh, so I can play non-discriminatorily, if that's a word. Uh, and not worry about, you know, I'm still muting the strings out, um, but it means in the, in the heat of the performance and basically these days you have to pretty much go hard on stage, otherwise, you know, people aren't interested. So we, we put a lot into the physical performance. This kind of stuff is just a little tool that can help. Uh, from there, um, this is essentially uh, in E standard, but an octave lower. So I can go from... to that. Then I move to this weird, this is really weird tuning, uh, E, G, E, F, B, D. Um, now how I came up with that is I just wanted to play this. I, I'm using one finger. Now let me just show you what that looks like uh, in diagram form. 
that's the shape there. So I've got my just one finger on the low E string and I've tuned those strings. On a regular guitar, that's what that chord shape would look like. This is how I'm doing it on Shuriken here and that's how it would look like on that. So, you know, you can see that's not practical. And as Ro, the other guitarist, says, the squeeze isn't worth the juice for that little bit. So I just changed the neck, the tuning. It's uh, helpful. Then I go to, um, basically, I think with this one's a tone down from memory. Yep. So you, got, you can see negative two semitones, which is a tone. And I turn the top three strings off because it's a little uh, arpeggiated bit. And then here I've turned the tuning off. I've got a lead sound. That was jazz. I just modulated then. Did you hear that? You heard it. <laughs> um, and then into like standard. So you can see because I'm in drop D, I've got it tuned up a tone. So I can... That... That allows me to, to go back to standard tuning because I usually play in drop D. And then uh, with the acoustic, um, I turn the top two strings off and I've got it tuned to standard as well. Just because I'm playing like a, I didn't want too much bottom end. That's the part where it's just, you know, one person on the beach with an acoustic in black and white and then it kicks in. You know what I mean? That's how I see it. And then right at the end, like it's a common thing we do in 12 foot ninja songs is you know, finish as low and hard as possible. Um, this is the dump trucks falling from the sky tuning. It's, again, really low. Now, this is super weird. I've only got three strings turned on. <laughs> off, off, <laughs> C, D, and then off. Now, how I came up with that is the riff is it has a, a bendy bit. <laughs> and another bendy bit. <laughs> and I wanted that to be all in fifth position, so I didn't have to move around and so it's just easy to play and when, when you see me playing it looks like I'm Bob Dylan I'm just strumming the whole thing it makes it easy so here we go I'm going to attempt to play the whole song and uh, I'm going to put a little red number there to show you the tuning changes
Thank you. That was Oxygen, that song. So, uh, yeah, I want to show you a couple of other crazy things you can do. Now, um, sometimes with the alternate tuning stuff, it's not convenient to plug the computer in and do all that sort of business. Helix actually has a great feature where you can change the tuning in your preset. And I found that useful when tracking guitar solos because often I, I don't think tuning and then tune the guitar, I sort of think playing and music and change the notes based on that. So if I wanted to, uh, I, I did something just for a little gag. So that's a tuning I set up for a little thing that I'm going to show you. But an example of that is Leo, the YouTube guy um, that does metal covers, wanted us to do a, uh, a guest spot. So I created this tuning and I completely forgot what it was. And, I, and you'll see that's why I use a surgical glove in the video. Uh, actually, before I show you that, this is what I want you to draw your attention to. That's the tuning section that shows you the strings. So here we go. So, if you ever forget your solo, just put a glove on and do this. But yeah, what I did was created this weird tuning and then didn't save the preset and completely forgot what I did and I created this pattern and anyway. Um, so, uh, to give you an idea of what you can do with that. Keep that going forever and stare awkwardly at everyone. Thank you. Now I call that tuning A hey, Beb because it's A E A A E B E B. I paid for that picture on Shutterstock. Just typed in sleazy guy. Cost me money, so I'm going to leave it there for a while. Um, now this one, I just wanted to show you some. Some sort of uh, how I would build a, a guitar using Workbench and just I'm going to play some weird ambient stuff and then kick into a double drop D riff. Again, just to show you the extremes. Now you might choose to stay in the sort of throat singing meditative state or, or go the heavy route, but it's just the full gamut. So here we go. But that's pretty fun, that. I just set up a little TP and meditate doing that stuff. Transcendent. Anyway, here's another Shutterstock thing. I photoshopped the makeup and the nose ring. This is if you want to play that song that um, Radiohead covered, that Lana Del Rey covered Radiohead, and I'm covering Lana Del Rey's cover of Radiohead's cover. Um, and you want to cry, sob like reach out I would never do this but I just wanted to show you the whole time 
canasters, beer, could have signed checks. There are question marks on the wall. She's like, why? Why? Some people are thinking this thought. I, I can, I'm Australian, you know, we're from the future. I can tell you're thinking this. Yes, that's cheating. I can hear some people saying, that's cheating. I just wanted to clarify the difference, okay? So, I think I've got to wrap it up there. So thanks for hanging out. I'll do this again at two o'clock. Don't come back actually, because I'll be telling the same jokes. So you can come back if you want. <laughs>